Hello, welcome back to Crack the Cryptic. And uh, oh, I've had a bit of a struggle with the, the longer videos. Apart from the gas I did a couple of days ago, the puzzles I've been getting have been very hard. But who knows, that may well continue today. Um, I guess our Sudoku is like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get each day. Um, we shall see now. I'm really, by the way, really appealed to by this puzzle. It is so clever. It is based on the Borromean rings. And uh, not only are the Borromean rings a, a very clever thing and a good thing to bring into a puzzle, and mathematicians will, the world over will be nodding their heads and going, yes, 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 we like the Borromean rings. Um, but the idea that this could have been done with this rule set and this simplicity of execution and yield a unique puzzle i think this might be one of having not solved it at all one of the most interesting puzzles we've ever looked at in some ways so re really intrigued to get going um i'm gonna give a quick shout out to uh to ella's girlfriend louisa who's been watching videos on the channel for quite some time now uh, i did mention her yesterday turning 22 today um and Louisa, this will be the only ever year in your life when your birthday falls on the... when your your age on your birthday is the same as the day's date. Good luck. Have a great day. Enjoy your chocolate cake. And um, now, what else do I need to mention? I need to mention Patreon. Do join us on Patreon. It's a brilliant Sudoku club and uh, there is loads of content, including today. Um, my extremely difficult cryptic crossword which has gone up i have not looked at the reaction yet but it's up there on patreon for those who like sitting through 40 minutes of mark not knowing words and then knowing impossible words every now and then um so that's there also in crosswords well today was the day of the john halpin um stream live cast i don't know quite what to call it with monica grady so that's happened um now on Friday, I wonder if I will be doing a crossword masterclass for the channel. I think I probably will. And uh, what else have we got going on? There'll be... Oh, big news. How have I not mentioned this? Our Gas2 app is out on the App Store. Refresh your app if you have it through the App Store. And Gas2 is out. Now, I don't know what dates it comes out on Steam and Google Play for Android yet. It may be out already. I, I've got a device. I've, the only device I can check with here doesn't tell me. So do have a look into that because the gas too, there'll be uh, 30 puzzles at first building up to 60 genuinely approachable Sudoku puzzles. Really good training ground for the Sudoku variants that we use so often. Um, and it's out now. So big news in the apps. And uh, we really hope you enjoy it. Do let us know what you think of them because, uh, and you know, give it five stars on the platform you're playing it on because that always helps. Um, thank you very much to anybody who purchases it. We are very grateful. It's only about three dollars or three pounds, I think. Not sure which. It's not a lot, but uh, loads of entertainment for you there. Now, enough about that not mentioning the merchandise. We'll go on to these Borromean rings. So the ooh, mathematicians will, will now wince, as I say. The Borromean rings are some bizarre example of um, three rings that once you introduce the third, whichever one it is, they're entangled. If you are able to remove the third, they are not tangled. Ah, now, there are two versions of this puzzle, and I'll put links to both. What Allergem originally, originally sent through looks like this, and it looks a bit better. And indeed, he's even managed to get the rings entangled in the right way. So the red overlaps the green, under the blue, over the green, under the blue, and so on, um, which is exactly what Borromean rings do. Now, I have, because this is a tiny URL link to play the puzzle in the beta of the app. Well done, Sven. Um, I have created our own version and I'm afraid I can't get the rings any bigger than this because they're the outlines on circles but um, I'm going to play it in this version 
and uh, you'll see it doesn't really matter from the rules. So let me go through the rules. Normal Sudoku, and the rules are brilliant. The rules are an amazing part of this puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to be putting one to nine in every row, column, and three by three box. Digits in cages sum to the clue in the corner of the cage. So those three add up to 16, those three add up to 19. Now, we have three different rings here. We have a red ring, and adjacent digits on the red ring have different parity. So it's going to alternate between odd and even digits all the way round. And it's fairly clear here which cells the ring goes through. It obviously cuts through a corner from that cell to that cell. So parity variation uh, alternation on the red ring. On the green ring, well, it's a German whispers ring. So they did the digits differ by at least five when they're neighboring. So those two could be one and six, or they could be one and nine, but they couldn't be three and seven, which don't differ by at least five. And then on the blue line, well, what is a blue line normally in variant Sudoku? It's normally an equal sum line, and it is here. So for each box this ring passes through, the sum is the same on the blue line. So those three add up to the same total as those two, the same total as those three, and the same total as those four. I mean, the, the, other, the given digits he's put in are all at the centres of the Borromean rings. They're all twos. And I mean, all we get is the three rings, those centres, and two little cages. I think this is an extraordinary construction. I really do. That Allergem, I think these are the standard colours of Borromean rings as well. So he's just adapted green and blue um, to the normal variants that they, they have with their coloured lines in our puzzles. It's incredible. Red... I think I've even seen that as a parity alternation line before. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, let's hope it solves brilliantly as well. I, I have hopes that it will. And uh, do give it a try on the link under the video. Check the video length if you want to see how hard I found it. Although, based on my recent form, you could probably halve that, ignore the mistake I'll make in the middle, and uh, that's proper time for the puzzle. Anyway, I'm going to get going now. Enough chat. Let's get cracking. So, well, I don't see how to even begin. I mean, this line is going to alternate parities. So I could colour half the cells green and the other half purple and say that either purple is odd and green is even or the other way around. Now, how would that relate to the green line? Yeah, OK, the things we know about German whispers are no fives on the line. That just doesn't work. And therefore, the digits along the line alternate between high numbers, more than five, and low numbers, less than five. And we call that polarity. So I've got alternating parity up here, alternating polarity round here. And that's going to mean that these two, well, they do alternate. I mean, I could colour the rest of this line green and purple, and it works as colouring. But then I'd be trying to remember that these are about alternating polarity, and these are about alternating parity. And frankly, I think the whole thing is nonsense. I don't want to colour the grid at all. I mean, this and this, which have different colours, for the red line, they have different parities, and for the green line, they have different polarities. But there still seems to me to be a lot of possibilities for those numbers. They could be an 8 and a 3, or a 1 and a 6. I don't know. I don't think it's helpful. Now, the 2. What does the 2 do? Oh, maybe this 2. I'm not really even... Oh, no, OK. I wasn't going to tackle the equal sum line, but actually I'm going to have a quick think about it. The minimum value of those four cells is 1, 3, 4, 5, which add up to 13. Now, the maximum value of these two is 9 and 8, so they have a maximum of 17. So the equal sum on this blue line is somewhere between 13 and 17. And it's not 17, actually, because then these cells would add up to 36, and the most you can get five different 
digits to add up to is 35. So the blue line max is now 60. I suppose part of the puzzle is going to be to try and narrow these down to things that impact on that minimum or maximum. Now, that's a weird way of looking at it. Um, what are these two and these? Ah, are they right? Okay, I'm going to very briefly, well, I don't know, but it might be brief, go back to greening and purpling the German whispers line. Yeah, this is interesting. Okay, one of these pairs, either those two cells or those two, are a 1-3 pair. And I know that because none of these central digits on the line, central to the sort of sides, if you consider this tetragon, um, none of these central digits can be a 4, and none of them can be a 2 because of their relation to this cell. The reason they can't be a 4 is because on each side of them you'd have to put a 9. It's the only digit that can be next to a 4 on a German whisper line. So we can't have two 9s in those cells, so therefore this can't be a 4. And that applies everywhere here. So one of these pairs is a 1-3. The other are from 7-8-9. The same stricture applies to 6s as applies to 4s. There's only one digit that can be next to it, so... It can't go in these cells. So, I mean, I'm just going to very lightly pencil mark those cells as 13789. Now, does that do anything to the blue or the red line that matters to me? Ah. Okay, if this is high... It can't be 7. I'll say that. And that's because these two would be low and would have to be at least 1 and 3. And 3 will not admit of a 7 next to it. So that is getting a bit more narrow than the others. Is that true here as well? Yes, it is. That can't be a 7. Now, are they low? Or are they high? This box is more important because of the blue line. Right, it's some sort of interaction of green, blue and red all in box 5. That's what we're looking at now. Ah. If this is... And these are both low. I don't know. I don't know what... What should I be thinking about here? It's something to do with this. Oh, I'm confusing myself now. Right, let's just have another think. Um... Oh, one of these, or these, is a three. There's a one three pair somewhere in these, either the green cells in row five or the purple cells in row seven. The three is going to be sitting between eight and nine. Right. I suspect this can't be the three, because that would put an eight or a nine on this blue line. Um, and the blue line can't add up to more than 16. It could just be an eight with one, three, four. But it couldn't be that, because this would be a 3. Ah! Right, I don't think this can be a 3 for that reason, because this would be an 8. And now these would have to be at least 1, 4, 5, and that all adds up to more 18, which is more than those two can add up to. So that's not a 3. Now, can it be a 1? Can it still be low? I have a feeling it's under more pressure than I realised because that is going to push this digit by the German whisper rule up to at least six. But a one is going to push the other three digits, which can no longer be one or two, up to three, four or five. So three, four, five, six would be the minimum if this is a one. 
and they add up to 18 and they can't sit on those two cells either. That must be right. This can't be low. So we've got the polarity of the green line. That is 8 or 9. So my green cells are becoming high. I'm not going to colour them, right? I said I wouldn't colour, and I'm not going to colour. I'm going to just alternate. So these are the low ones. That is indeed a 1-3 pair. This is at 7, 8 or 9. Now, the 1-3 one, pair, one of them has 8, 9 next to it. No, let's keep thinking about the blue line in box 5. These are both low. They are 1, 3 or 4. You can have a 4 in these positions because it could be flanked by two 9s. They don't see each other. Um, right, but we now can't put 1, 3 and 4 on this line. So 1, 3, 4, 5 has gone as a sum, which would be 13. That's not the blue line sum anymore. I think 14 has gone, because I think that would have to be 1, 3, 4, 6. And that would again use 3 and 4. Oh, sorry, it would use all of 1, 3, 4 in those cells, and you couldn't fill that. So 14 has gone. So this line is now adding up to 15 or 16. Now, what would it be if it was 15? Let's say you had 1, 3... Then you have to miss out one of 1, 3, and 4 here. 1, 3, 5, 6 is 15. That's what it would be. And would that work? That would definitely put a 4 here. That would be a 9. You'd have 1, 3, 5, 6 in these cells. Mm, I think it does work. But we've got this to 15 or 16 now as the sum on this line. 1, 3, 5, 6. And that would have to be a 4 then. Now if it's 16, there might be pressure on this still. If it's 16, which is the highest this can be because of this sum, then it could be 1, 3, 4, s 1, 3, 4, 8. No, we can't use 1, 3, and 4. That's the whole point. Right. 1, 3, 5, 8. That can't be right. 1, 3, 5, 7. That's one possibility. Oh, this is odd. Oh, my goodness. We know the... Ah, so slow. We know the parity. 1 or 3 is odd. We know the parity along the red line. Uh, okay, I'm going to go again. I just keep changing my mind. Let's parity colour this red line just so, just for a bit so we can see the colours. Orange for odd, blue for even. Yes, that gives us the central digit. That is now eight because it, it's even. Right, these can't be four. They're one and three. Things are getting good now. This is very restrictive. We're going to have to eliminate a three to give us the lowest numbers possible, which will now be 1, 4, 5, and 6, which adds up to 16. That is the number. That is the equal sum line number. This is a absolutely fantastic puzzle, by the way. Fantastic. This is so clever. I love it. Right, 1, 4, 5, 6 in the cells I've highlighted. That's the 1. These are 4, 5, and 6. This odd one is a 5. Worth having the odds highlighted at this moment. 16 is the sum. That's a 9, 7 pair. These that make up 35 must be 8, 6, 5. Yes, they do add to 19. That's a 3. This is on the whisper line, so that's next to 8 or 9 here. Um, wow, this is bonkers. Right, this is a high digit, but I don't know which one. This... One of these is a 3 and has an 8-9 pair flanking it. Oh, that's not an 8 anymore. That is 7 or 9. These can't include... Oh, they can include... Oh, look, that sees a 2 and a 3, and it's low. That is 1 or 4. This sees a 1. It's 2, 3 or 4. This is a 7-9 pair, which I hadn't spotted in the central box. 
Um, the whisper line is probably the help, most helpful still. Or is it? I don't know. Well, I'm just going to fill in six, seven, eight, or nine here. I don't know. It could be a six. Same again here. And maybe we get to resolve this one, three pair at some point. This is so clever. That's even. That's four or six. These two are from four, six, and eight. They can't be two. Um, that's a third even in the row. Interesting. Now, we've also got the, th the thing that actually might turn out to be most helpful from here on is that these groups add up to 16. Although I have to say I don't know how to use that yet. What about this 16 here? Not helpful yet, I reckon. We'll come back to that. That can't be a 2. I've just spotted there's one in its box. Ah, oh, that's really good. This is three or four, so it can't be next to six or seven. So that's a nine. This is eight or nine. That nine sees this cell. That's a seven. That's a nine. That's not a nine. So for this to be three, that's going to be eight and that's going to be nine. Oh, this is eight, though. So this isn't 8, and this is therefore not 3, this is 1. This is 3, and that's next to 8 and 9, and that becomes an 8. Look at this! This is fantastic! It just flows on and on. This can't be a 4 by the whisper rule, because it's next to 8 on the line. So that's a 3. This one is not decided. This can end up being a 1 or a 4, no problem. Now, what about the 16 cage now? If it doesn't have the 8, does it have to have the 9 in? It could be... No, it doesn't. It doesn't have a 9 in. Look, Sudoku tells me where 9 is in the box. Right, now it has to have a 7 in. It's either 7, 6, 3 or 7, 5, 4 for definite. Oh no, hang on, it's got a 3 in. Look, that 3 can't go in those cells. It's got a 3 in. It's 3, 6, 7. That's a 4. This isn't. This is a 2-5 pair, which may help at some point. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, look, I can't really solve this either. This could end up being a 6, no bother, next to the 1s. But now, that, uh, with the exception of those two pencil marks, I've basically finished the German Whisper Ring. So I didn't need to highlight it. Good. Now, this is odd, and it's not 5 or 9. And this one isn't 9 or 7, and this one isn't 1. And this pencil marking is barely worth doing. 2, I'm still going to do it. 2 gives me the illusion of action when I'm actually just thinking. Uh, right, these, these add up to 16. They've got an 8 in. So this pair adds up to 8. And it doesn't have a 2 in it. So that's a 1 or a 3. And this is a 5 or a 7. The 5 would have an impact on this cage. And the 7 would have an impact. Oh, this pair doesn't need an impact. Because it's got a 9 looking at it. There we go. And that didn't help with this pair. Now what about this group adding up to 16? That may be the hardest to establish. Is it worth... I'll just have a look for a bit more Sudoku first. We've got, we've got a 2 in one of those cells. 8, 8 I can place in box 2. That's exciting. So that's not an 8. Um, 9 is in one of those. 5, 6, 8, 7, 9. 3 is somewhere there. Ah, 3 is in one of those two. So it can be in this 8 sum. But if that's a 1, 7 pair, that's a 3 and that's a 2... That's quite exciting. I do get excited by odd stuff. I know that. I can't help it. Right, 8 in this box is in one of those two. So it's in one of these two in box 9. Um, 8, 2, 9. In row, in column 8, has to be in one of those cells. That's an X-wing. So 2 in box 7 
by, by which I mean we're using up the two twos for rows eight and nine in boxes eight and nine. So the two in row seven must be in box seven. Right, let's fill in the candidates. One, three, four, and six. Oh, bother, there's loads here. One, four, five, six, eight, nine. Right, this group has to add up to 16. I am going to think about that now. If this was an eight, these would have to add up to eight. They would actually have to be three, five. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to note these possibilities down just in case they turn out to be a bit limited. If that was a 6, these add up to 10. They can't be 6, 4 or 7, 3. Oh, they can't be 2, 8. They would be 1, 9. If that's a 4, these add up to 12. But they couldn't be 4, 8 or 7, 5. Ooh, they would be 3, 9, which uses two of the same possible digits. If this was a 2... I have a feeling this is impossible. No. These would add up to 14. They would be 6, 8. And they couldn't be that because of this box, this cage down here. If that was 6, 8, you'd have to put 5 in both of these cells. So that's not a 2. And these candidates, I should, I should have stopped candidate marking that. The, the only candidates for here are 1, 3, and for here, 5, 9 which is an amazing surprise. It's really very clever. I've now got a 4, 6, 8 triple in this row. So that's 5 or 7. 2, 5 or 7 here. Oh, hang on, I've got a 2 looking at that cell. Hey, Sudoku, do your thing. Right. I've got a 5 there, so that's not a 5. It doesn't do anything else makes it a bit more likely that that's a 2, but that's maybe only in my mind. Um, what next? Oh, this is so interesting. It's such a brilliant concept and so well executed. Allergem. Allergem, I've just realised, you could easily do some crossword wordplay for every one a brilliancy. All a gem. And I doubt very much that's why that's his pseudonym. 75H9. This is 1, 4, or 6. Oh, that's not a 7. Doesn't sort out the 257 triple. Um, okay, let's think about the 5, 6, 8. Oh, we haven't got a 4 in this column. So 4 is in one of those cells. 8 at the top is somewhere along those. Uh, struggling a bit now, although all of the steps have come beautifully on in this puzzle, so it can't be too... Ah! Look, where does 5 go in this row? That's quite nice. This 5 says not here, and it can't be there because of the 5, 6, 8 triple. That's lovely. So 5 is in one of those two cells, and now this cell can't be 5, and we know how to make up the 16 here with a 1 there, which replicates in one of these cells. 7's also somewhere at the top of column 6. Ah, oh, is that all that does? 5, 6, 8, 9, 1, 7. No, this becomes a 3. It's not all it does. This becomes a 2. That sorts out the 2x wing. Now, this is not a 3, and this is not a 4, so this is a 1, 6, 7, triple. Oh, look, the, the reasons why 4 can't be in these cells are rather beautiful. can't be there by Sudoku, it can't be here by German Whispers, because it's next to a 1, and it can't be here by Parity Ring. That's really lovely. So 4 is not in any of those cells, and it is therefore here in the column. That's a 6 in the same box. That's 8. That's 4. Oh, this is brilliant. That's not 8. This is now 5, 6, or 7. That's five, oh, that's 5 or 6, which is a 5, 6, 8 triple. We can put a 4 here and an 8 here. That 4 sees a 1. This can't be 3. This is a naked 6. That's a seven. Three, six pair now. See that cell, which becomes a four. 
This is five or seven, and the one in the column is here. That's become a five. This is a seven. This is a six. Look at this just filling itself in somehow now. This is a brilliant, brilliant thing. Oh, I, I know I'm going crazy, but I love it. Oh, look, I can finish the whole bottom row. That's a 2-1 pair. This is a 5-4 pair now, which, oddly, I can't fill in. I can in a moment, though, because I can put 4 at the top. That sorts it out. We're sort of finishing off this puzzle now, which I suppose, given how few clues there were, once, once we got it going, I suppose that was to be expected, but I didn't. Because you just don't know what to expect with this puzzle. It's so interesting. That can't be a four. This is a four. Six, seven, or nine here. Um, now, these, I've forgotten these. They have to add up to 12, and we've got that that's a four. So this is now the three, nine pair. There we go. Uh, it was because those three, I mean, had to add up to 16, not because they all had to add up to 12. Let's get rid of the colouring. We don't need that anymore. Um... This is a 1-6 pair. This is all going to get resolved beautifully any moment now, I believe. <laughs> um, maybe it is 8. There couldn't still be a trick up the sleeve here, could there? No, look, 5 is looking at that cell. So that's oh, that's gone coloured. That's a 2. Uh, that is 1 or 6. And this is 1-6 or 8. That's in a 1-6 pair which sorts out the rest of the row. We get a five at the beginning. Um, isn't that amazing? There's still a German Whispers digit to do. So weird. Um, now, one, six, eight, five, two, four, nine, no, in the, yes, that, Nine is looking at that cell. Probably has been for a while. That sorts out all of these things on the right. That becomes a six. That sorts out eight, six. We get a one at the top of the grid. A three, eight pair flanking it, which we can fill in. This is a nine. That one I don't know. One and six are resolved. One and two are resolved. Uh, that's a five, and that's going to give us our last pairs. A seven and eight, seven and five, and there we go. The solution is correct. That is a fabulous puzzle. That is exactly what I needed today. A really, really clever puzzle that's not actually too hard, but has some beautiful intricacies and this beautiful overlay of the Borromean rings. I, I'm a big fan of this puzzle. I've made that perfectly clear. And I'm going to re-emphasize it. What a puzzle. I hope you gave it a try. Because that is rewarding. Great stuff from Allergem. Um, I hope to see more of him on the channel soon. And thank you for watching, as always. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.